Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another Dragalia Laws video. How's it going, everyone? Hope you're feeling good. Hope if you summoned for Galilee Meal, you were able to get him, and if not, then I wish you the best of luck in your next summons. Because, hey, a prize showcase is coming up, and I'm going to talk about Valks, Pharos, and Michael. All three of them are coming, so let's go over them and talk about it, huh? And thank you very much for watching the video. I don't know why I'm saying this now. I should save it for the end. Leave a like if you like. Let's get into it. <laughs> let's go. Sorry, I'm trying to remember to say that at the end of the video, not at the beginning, just so I can get into it faster, but now I'm going, I'm delaying the video. Anyway, it's prize showcase, never summoned for these, for the prizes. The prizes are absolutely trash, other than these two, the Sunlight Store, Stone, and the Damascus Ingot. Every other thing in here is only good if you are doing free summons, and this has zero free summons. So never summon for the prize showcase itself. Just felt like saying it in case you're new or something. So if you're new and you're watching my video, thank you very much. Valks, this is going to be interesting because he has Thor, and kind of the funny thing is that Galathor is notoriously terrible because they completely screwed over Thor. So I'm kind of interested to see how they're going to do it with a man who's going to turn into Thor. Because yeah, the Energized mechanic is DOA um, in the Hillity content, so let's see. The Force Scion of Alberia, the man renowned for his military and leadership prowess, though he generally keeps to himself, his love for his country and people speak volumes. After serving the Empire for a time, he now works with the Halodome in, in order to save the world. Royal Blitz, shareable 5. Deals damage to enemies directly at it and inflicts paralysis and flash burn. Damage 500 over 4 hits. Damage 600 over 1 hit. Skill energy required, 3,849. When it's a shared skill, it's 11,461. Special effects, paralysis, last 13 seconds. Flash burn, last 21 seconds. Lightning Rampage. Deals damage to enemies directly ahead and dispels one buff from each target. Nice. Damage is 600 over 3 hits and 1,700 over 1 hit. Skill energy required, 6,296. Dispels buff. Defense, 15% is a co-ability. His chain co-ability is team defense amp equals HP regen 5. Stalwart Warrior 2. When shapeshifting, the user will transform into Thor regardless of what dragon they are equipped with. Grant the user a unique force strike that da draws enemies towards the user. In addition, grants the user immunity to knockback for the duration of quest, permanently energizes the, unit, the user, and when the user takes damage, grants them the Defiant Spirit effect for 20 seconds. Curse and the Hilly and Afflictions will not- <laughs> Will not reset the user's energy level, nor will using skills. During Defiant Spirit, damage dealt by the user's standard attacks and their area of effect are increased. After Defiant Spirit is granted, the ability will not grant it again for 5 seconds. Also restores 30% of the damage taken during skills or attacks as HP. Damn. This effect is only activated while charging skills or attacking and during the transformation sequence when shapeshifting. Unconstrained Fate 2. Reduces the ability to poison and curses by 100%. Royal Shield 2, when the user's HP drops to 70%, grants the user the entire team a team defense amp with a maximum team amp level of 2 and a 1 use divergent shield that nullifies damage up to 40%. If the user's maximum HP, the shield can stack with ordinary shields after activating this ability when active again for 30 seconds. Okay, so how do you make an energizing unit good? How about you just make them immune to Curse and Nihility? This is maybe the most <laughs> silly thing I've ever seen. Not only is it immune to Curse and Nihility, but using your own damn skills won't. So I think Galathor can finally actually be run with someone. You would want to run him with Valks. This doesn't benefit the whole team. Obviously, it's just him. But hey, it's better than having energy being completely useless, which it is for 99% of the roster in the Hillity content. The 1% is Valks, who has been given immunity. <laughs> it sounds like he's going to be busted as hell, to be honest. He seems like he's going to be a strong, big boy. Look at this gigantic boy. This boy is going to be dealing some crazy damage, especially with all that stuff they gave him. I think it's really funny that instead of, you know, fixing the mechanic, they've decided to just make a unit who's immune to the... the it's a great... Uh, you know what, to be fair, I don't think they were specifically banned. To be fair to energy uh, units, they were not the reason why... Um, they were kind of like a side effect of Nihility. Nihility was taken to take down Karina and a bunch of other units that were running roughshod over the game. And in the, kind of like in the crosshairs, they took down Energize as well. Though, from what I understand, people say that Energize was pretty 
it wasn't like the greatest thing in the world, but it was still pretty good for being able to do crits and stuff. But now all the units that were 100% energy focused got completely screwed over once Nihility got taken down when they were not the problem units. So we'll see how problematic this guy's gonna be, huh? Because it sure seems like he is built to last and built strong. So that's my feeling on him. Next, oh, regarding Volx's ability Star Wars Warrior 2. Velox's ability Star Wars Warrior 2 is permanently energizes him during quest abilities whose activation requires a user's energy level be increased or the user to be energized will not activate. Okay. Excluding the beginning of quests or when Velox is revived. Okay, next, Ferris. Mmm, the second sign of Olveria and a man of nearly unparalleled intellect, he becomes a puppet of the progenitor in order to battle his worm scale. After regaining his freedom, he has been using his knowledge to its fullest extent in order to save the world. Wisdom Talisman grants all teammates a shield, increases their water resistance, and increases their chances of inflicting affliction. Ooh, okay. The skill is used during a dragon drive. A variant called Punishment of Heavens will be used instead. Punishment of Heaven deals damage to enemies in a lion and inflicts poison and storm lash. In addition, it will deal bonus damage to targets with Victim of Science. The spells one buff from each of them. Then remove Victim of Science. This bonus damage will be increased against enemies inflicted with any infliction. Shield. Water resistance 8%, affliction success rate 40 fucking percent, okay. During Dragon Drive, damage 588 over 2 hits, 672, bonus damage over 1 hit, skill energy required 3650, dispels buffs, poison, storm lash, damage modifier 130 against foes with affliction. Ofa bonds remove all afflictions from the entire team, grant them a team strength amp and partially fill the user's dragon drive gauge. If the user has a fatigue debuff, the skill will remove it. If the user is if this is used during dragon drive, a variant called Uranus Uranus's Claw will be used instead. Uranus's Claw grants the entire team a team strength amp, deals damage to enemies directly ahead, and extends the remaining time of any of the following afflictions in inflicted on enemy hit by this attack by 15 seconds. Poison, Burn, Paralysis, Frostbite, Stormlash, Flashburn, Shadow Blight, Scorched. Uh, the remaining time of these afflictions cannot be extended beyond their original duration, and after activating, their extension will not activate again for the same target for 15 seconds. Okay, special effects, affliction recovery, all afflictions, team amp. Okay, max level 1, dragon drive energy gain, 1000. During dragon drive, 1170 over 2 hits, skill energy required, 7490. Okay, core ability is HP 15%, chain co-op ability is win, no afflictions equals strength 6% up. Uranus is blessing, grant the user a strength amp with a maximum team amp level of 1 when the user inflicts an enemy with an affliction. After this amp is granted, this build will not add granted again for 8 seconds. Also grants the user a dragon drive gauge and changes the shapeshift button into a dragon drive button. Tapping this button activates the dragon drive. The user's four strikes will fill their dragon drive gauge if they connect. Dragon drive grants the following effect. The user's standard attacks are changed and fills the user's dragon drive gauge if they connect. The user's four strikes are changed and deals damage to multiple targets and enemies near those victims. They will also apply the victim of science effect to enemies hit. The user's strength is increased by 35%. The user's HP is restored when they are hit by an attack that inflicts an affliction. <laughs> After activating this effect, will not activate again for 10 seconds. Freeze resistance is 100%. Thirst for life 2 reduces the susceptibilities to afflictions by a hundred. Damn! By 150% during Dragon Drive. Also during Dragon Drive, once per quest, when the user would take damage greater than the remaining HP, that damage is instead nullified, as a Dragon Drive gauge is completely consumed. Damage from attacks that forcibly reduce the user's HP to zero or deactivate Dragon Drive cannot be nullified in this way. Also, with the exception of damage dealt by afflictions, buffs, debuffs, and certain attacks, the users will temporarily be invulnerable to damage while the effect is being activated. When activated, this ability damage nullification effect also removes all afflictions from the users and applies the fatigue debuff for to, to them for 60 seconds. During fatigue, the user cannot activate their dragon drive and their dragon drive gauge will not be filled. Okay, there had to be some kind of huge negative because it seemed like it was all huge positives for that. Okay. Um, man, they are really releasing gala quality units for normal banner. I mean, it makes sense because these are, you know, they're princes of Alberia or scions of Alberia, whatever you want to call it. So they have to be kind of be as strong as Leonidas or Shell or Zena or I was about to say Zeno from Dragon Ball or the prince. So they, it, it makes sense for them to be this strong, but 
God damn, do they feel strong. The only thing I'm not sure about Pharos is that sometimes some Dragon Drive characters can be a little bit wonky, and this looks like he's a kind of a support one. So the reason I call him wonky is because sometimes they won't do their supportive things at the right time. They haven't really nailed their AI a whole bunch. So it's gonna be interesting to see kind of how his AI is because he is mainly a support unit. It's a support Dragon Drive unit and it looks like he gives a lot of good support, but if the AI doesn't support you and instead focuses on attack, then it's kind of like, well, this was a waste of a lot of things. So it should also be, it's all especially also because the fatigue can be given to everyone, it looks like. Um, all afflictions from the user. Okay, it's just him. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, he seems crazy strong. Uh, and also, the only <laughs> the only negative about him is the negative specifically that they gave him to prevent him from being too crazy powerful. So I think it ends up balancing itself out pretty good. The resistance stuff is also fantastic. At least I think so. Next, Michael. Michael. One of the dragons known as the Far of Archangels, a pleasure seeker, whose behavior often confuses his true thoughts or are impossible to ascertain. Though he appears delicate, his power is without peer, and guides people and dragons alike based on the strength of his own convictions. Okay. Angelic Storm, during close quarter combat, deals damage to surrounding enemies, inflicts poison, and grants the entire team a temp team defense amp. But during range combat, it deals damage to target and nearby enemies, inflicts Storm Blash. It grants over damage to the entire team. I feel like you would almost always want ranged over the defense. I guess it depends on what you're building towards. Poison, team amp, storm lash over damage. Lasts 180 seconds. Potency, 40% of strength. His abilities are wind strength, 60%. And Michael's favor. The user is attuned to win. Extend the window between hitting an enemy and the combo counter resetting for 2.5 seconds. And every 15 hit combo increases the user's strength by 3%. The strength increase can stack up to 10 times and is removed when the combo counter resets. It also grants wind attuned adventurers in the team over damage based off of. Wow! Based off of 20% of the user's strength for 60 seconds. At the start of quest, grants the user over damage based on 20% of their strength for 60 seconds when the combo counter resets. In addition, regardless of the user's attunement, while Shapeshift this Michael creates a combat zone around the user and grants one or two combat styles, close quarter or ranged. If there are enemies within the combat zone, the user will engage in close quarter combat, otherwise they do range, the user's standard attack patterns, and the effects will change based off the style. Cool, he seems exactly like, um, I was gonna call him Basilisk, but that's not how you pronounce his name. The dude that is the buddy of Michael, or I guess the son, something like that. Uh, he sounds very interesting. I kind of like the close quarter. I like that they're very similar. It's been a very long time since waiting for him to be released. Um, I like the over damage stuff. He does something different than no other wind um, dragon kind of gives. So I think, I don't know if he'd be good, but he sounds interesting enough that I think he would be good. But I guess wait and see on that one. Um... I think potential to be very strong. Maybe it's because I don't feel want to feel like I overvalue over damage, but from my experience of over damage, it's really, really good. So I'm gonna give him a thumbs up. I think all three of these dudes are really, really fucking solid. Like Michael, I could see some negatives to him of him being like, well, you would use other. His main weakness is you would use other wind dragons, because um, wind dragon is actually a very competitive. Um, dragon slot funny enough with all the the options they have with reboard zephyr uh Gal beast volk um midgar soma zero and some other ones as well so i guess you could technically slot them in there but it kind of depends on what you have hmm usually the last one is saved for the support so yeah not really a it's really more of a tack thing but whatever if you're summoning for any of these dudes i think you're going to be pretty satisfied if you're going to get any of them, to be honest. Um, they've been doing this for a while now, releasing regular-ass adventurers who feel Gala quality good. And it's not like Gala uh, adventurers are getting worse. We just had Emil and he's crazy strong, or at least extremely interesting in what he can do. So I think it ends up being a good thing. So if you end up deciding to summon... I wish you guys good luck. You're going to be in pretty good hands <laughs> if you do get lucky and get who you want. I think I'm going to continue to keep saving 
for the next anniversary and our collab stuff because I need to really get back to actually saving my things. I've been spending too much too long at the two multi range. I want to get back to my 30 multi so I can get a guaranteed sparking. But I digress. Thank you very much everyone for watching the video if you made it this far. Remember to leave a like, comment down below, tell me how you feel. Or just say hey. I like talking to you guys. But you don't have to. Don't feel like the need to talk. And subscribe to me if you want some more stuff featuring me. Till next time everyone. You guys have a good day. Have a good night. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Where's the stop record? There it is.